Hello, welcome to another edition of the Pace Report. I'm Brian Pace reporting live here at the Blue Note here in New York City. Tonight, pianist Eldar Jagirov will be performing selections with his trio along with special guest vibraphonist Joe Locke. Eldar has just come off the heels of releasing a beautiful solo piano record called Three Stories in which he covers jazz and classical music. And what I really like about this CD is that one, he's putting his own twist to a lot of the great classical as well as jazz standards. Tonight we're going to sit down and talk about the brand new CD. We're going to talk about his role in jazz music as a pianist as well as an educator. And we're going to talk about the direction and vision of how jazz music is going, especially coming from his generation because Eldar is only 25 years old and in the last six years he's made an important dent in jazz music. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the sounds of Eldar featuring special guest Joe Locke live here on the Pace Report here at the Blue Note here in New York City. stories this is a beautiful solo CD and you are really going in the tradition of the great American jazz standards as well as your original roots which is classical yeah it was a it was a fun record to make you know I um, I made that record in like a day and uh, it was at the Hammerstein ballroom and um, just pretty much one or two takes on everything and the whole record was done and the good thing about a uh, solo piano record, you know, the production is very fast. As long as the the person mics it right, which uh, which was a very fun experience doing it. So it was just done very quickly and it was in the can for a while. And then it was released and then I went on tour pretty much everywhere. Europe, um, Brazil, Japan, playing a lot of solo piano gigs, but always keeping the group up, you know, always keeping the trio because I... I enjoy just, just you know, grooving, you know, with 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 the band, uh, with Armando and Ludwig, and um, just you know, it it always keeps fresh the variety, you know, to to do to do a solo piano hit, then to do a a symphonic hit. Um, last year I was playing with some symphonies, uh, San Diego Symphony, uh, Russian National Orchestra, and then to do a trio hit at the Blue Note, you know, it's it's just like all these different worlds colliding, and it just feels always good and fresh. Elder, I mean, you really go the whole gamut, and there's some original compositions on here as well. What were you thinking as far as putting together the songs for this? Because I know that you had at least 20 or 30 songs, and you had to condense it to under, like, 15. Well, um, 
Yeah, the record's pretty long. It's like 70-something minutes. And, and actually, the last record before that, The Virtue, the, the trio record, with the guests was like 70 something minutes I just but we had more material um, and this solo record also had more material so I just you know cut it out and I just you know I fit enough music on a CD at that point because especially with those records they came up like two years apart so there was a lot of growth and and those particular records you know I, I gotta say the three stories and and virtue I'm, I'm very proud of those records and I'm glad they came out and it's been a joy to play live all the tunes and all the music and just grow that music and I mean certainly today you know a lot of the tunes that we play they sound different even from a year ago or something like that so it's always evolving and and always getting to a point where the comfort meets the liberty and you can be spontaneous and and confident and so all those things come together and and as far as the trio you know I always want to just I mean all the music you know I, I just go for that coherence energy and excitement and in the end i just want to make the listener feel good like it's a good day to be alive for them you know what i mean like because in the end it's like i want them to walk away from the show and and uh, feel like they've had a good time and and uh, i just feel blessed to play the music for them and then when they dig it like they did right now it was just uh, it's a profound experience for me to be able to sort of channel that to them and i Words cannot express how how much I appreciate the audience coming out. You know, Eldar, it, you said something, too, an, an experience. I mean, literally, when I watch you, and I've watched you for years, it's like the fans know that you do a lot of woodshedding because, I mean, you sound flawless when you get on those keys. No, <laughs> thanks. It's, uh, that's a very high compliment. Thanks. I appreciate it. What is the woodshedding process for you? Because, I mean, with the solo record, you know, it sounds like, and when I hear anybody record a solo piano record, it's almost like they're woodshedding anyway because it's just you, yourself, and what you feel. Well, my my practice routine, I mean, I, I pretty much practice pretty much a daily thing for me. Um, I spend a lot of time practicing. Um, and the things that I really practice mostly, I mean, my routine is based on three things, basically. Um, I always listen to music. I consider that something that's a lifestyle, you know what I mean? It's, 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 a, it's a practice in and itself, you know, when you're listening to music. And I, I want to listen to all kinds of music, you know, I don't just listen to jazz. Um, I listen to mainly just jazz, rock, hip-hop, at the piano, I practice mostly classical music, um, probably 75%, maybe 85% of all my routine is classical music. And I just, um, I always try to collect different bits and pieces of information, of vocabulary, and try to um, sort of integrate it in, in my system where it becomes part of me. And at any given point, um, whether it's melodic and harmonic, just the study of resolutions, the study of, of melody, and on a drive level, the precision that it gives you. Um, and then sort of combine it into a way where you know, living in 2012, I want to be making music that's relevant, you know, and relevant to the way I see everything around me and and the way the world moves, you know, when, when you feel it a certain way uh, and, and you're part of it. And, you know, certainly being in New York um, influences your music to a certain degree where New York will be part of your music. You know, you can't be in New York and have the music not be New York, you know? There's so many different ways to do it, and, and there's so many different ways that people play. Yet, in the end, all the, all the younger musicians that I feel like, everybody shares a certain pool of vocabulary that's cohesive, and, um, and it always is compatible. You know what I mean? Because of those influences, I, I feel like all the, young, uh, all the young musicians have a certain vibe to them that even though they come from different places or they try to go towards certain subgenres, there's a certain compatible way of everybody playing. And I like that because I think as we go into the future, all, all the younger musicians that are going to be making music, as they come together, they're always going to be making music that's going to be cohesive. And that's what I like. The good musicians, you know what I mean? So I'm, I'm excited, you know, because there's so many good musicians and they inspire me. And, and certainly playing with Armando and Ludwig and having Sunday, we had Chris Potter who killed it, um, 
we had a beautiful vocalist, Karen Allison, who was, uh, who I've known since I was like 11 years old, since I was growing, growing up in Kansas City. And um, I just remember seeing her and it sort of brings me back to my childhood, you know, when I was a young kid. And today we had Joe Locke, um, just beautiful. He killed it today. Um, and um, just, you know, enjoy having this sort of like this mini festival with the trio, with every, every um, night a different guest. Define your role as one of the students of piano and piano pyrotechnics. Well, I mean, I just, to me, it's just the, the amount of, um, I mean, the more you do it, the better you get at doing it, you know, and so when you spend just an enormous amount of time doing it, um, I mean, like, so I guess you're talking about like the technical ability. It's almost like an afterthought, you know, because it's it's just something that becomes ingrained and and uh, you know from just playing and and you know I, I don't really consider a lot of times that sometimes when I practice I I don't really feel like I'm practicing. I feel like I'm just enjoying and as long as I'm learning something, you know. And a lot of times I'm a slow learner, you know. I just I like to I like to get things precise and hopefully they get stored in in my mind and. And I get to experience that, and I get to throw it in into my playing at any given point. So it's all these different bits and pieces of information sort of flow into at the given right moment. You know, people have held you, they've compared you to R. Tatum and Oscar Peterson, who are both two of your, your idols on the piano. But, you know, as of the last couple of years, you have evolved and developed your own sound. Yeah, I mean, it's always, um, like I was saying, the way, the, way, um, the way Oscar Peterson phrases. You know, there's this one track, um, Woody and You, that he does. And just like the phrasing, the way he plays um, is always, I feel like, something that I enjoy hearing. And, you know, I mean, that track is just... You know, one just that came to my mind because I was listening to it on shuffle the other day. But um, I mean, it's 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 a certain way of speaking. You know, the 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 way the way it's approached, the way it's spoken. You know, and the way the vocabulary is spoken. But as far as the content, you know, the content is being, I guess, processed from so many different, developed from so many different sources. You know, so all these different sources sort of come together um, from from the past from um, from today, you know, and they kind of sort of all come in in a certain spot where it's a certain mixture of it. You know, it's like it's like almost like um, the way the way the 
the instrument speaks, so there's a certain flow to it, you know, and, and the flow is developed through these sources. And then um, once you spend enough time doing it, it becomes um, sort of like an apparent uh, voice where it's just, uh, you can sort of recognize the attack. Um, you know, simple things like, uh, seemingly simple, um, the way the finger touches it, the way the consistency sort of speaks and the way the waves um, of the way the, the lines are built, you know, that's sort of all part of that flow, you know. <laughs> you guys what was that on the bandstand this evening <laughs> i was man i said my prayers before the set and i th i think they were answered <laughs> i had a ball man i had a ball my first time playing with eldar first time playing with first time playing together right playing together yeah and i'm a fan of the trio for a long time i mean virtue was on on repeat like was on loop in my apartment for a long time i was telling eldar earlier that i was trying to figure out one of the tunes when i first got the CD and I was listening to it on the subway the first song is called uh, a hex position and I was trying to figure out the time signature and I was on the subway going to Brooklyn and I went four stops past where I was supposed to get off <laughs> so I'm a fan of the band so this was a thrill tonight man you know tonight I was watching and I said this is gotta eventually be recorded because this really goes back to the whole Gary Burton and Chick Corea sides Tonight was a lot of fun. Tonight was a lot of fun. I mean, I, um, for the first time playing, and Joe hit those tunes hard. And, and, uh, and I'm always happy when the, when the audience responds to a certain energy and a certain uh, um, presence on the stage. And, you know, having, having Joe come up there and just sort of add to it and, and we sort of uh, take each other's energy and, and, um, and play that music and it's 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 a lot of fun you know to to feel that back from the from the audience joe you've been in the game for a minute and you've played with endless icons and even up and coming musicians and eldar's been on the scene for a while what is it about him as a piano player that you see that he's bringing to a whole other voice to the instrument as well as this generation of jazz musicians i, I don't even think of eldar's I don't think of the piano first. I, I think of that. I, I think of he's a he's a musical personality that has this this really u unique. He's a unique person. I mean, if you speak to Eldar, I, I mean, first time we met, before we played, I just dug him as a person. He's very articulate, but really funny and really a soulful person. And I hear all of that in his music. He's um, he's very classically trained. 
and he has a, a real un understanding of classical tradition, but he's got a lot of funk in, him, in his personality, and it comes out in the playing, too. He's got a lot of grease, you know, with, with a, 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 all the knowledge, all the intellect. He brings a lot of soul to it, and that's what I love. And he writes great. He writes great tunes. So, I mean. Eldar, what about Joe? I mean, you've played with your share of some some icons in the industry as well. What is it about Joe on the vibes that says something that's totally different than some of the other vibraphonists out there? Well, the first time we met was um, at Lionel Hampton Jazz Festival. And I've known about Joe um, for quite some time at that time. And we just sat and uh, I introduced myself and we had breakfast uh, and uh, we talked about music and we were sitting on the show and um, to me, it was a pleasure to meet him at first. And to sort of put the man with the music is always a good thing because, you know, you, sometimes you don't know what, what, the, what, the, what, what the man's going to be after you hear the music, you know. And when you are pleasantly surprised by uh, a certain warmth and integrity and soul behind it. <laughs> What does jazz music mean to you? Jazz. Um, I, I'd rather, you know, call, I mean, it's maybe it's a really nerdy way to say it, <laughs> uh, instrumental creative music. Because what it's so broad, and there's so many different sources to it, that playing this music is going back and, and absorbing the language of the masters when you go to the people that you mentioned. Um, Oscar Peterson, you know, Charlie Parker, um, Thelonious Monk. And when you absorb that language, it, it's, it's sort of like this bass, um, and not just on a technical level, but on, on an emotional level of, of the same thing that we're talking about, the flow, the way it speaks, the way it goes. And that becomes sort of like the, the basis of, uh, of where you're going. But you always keep that, you know, you always keep that at the core of it, you know, and you never lose it. And, and blues it is at the core of it. And, uh, and, then, and then you're making this architecture, you're making this music 
based on the vocabulary that you develop and extend for yourself. And, um, and that's what I think this music means to me, you know, and grooving it. That'll do it again for another edition of the Pace Report. I'm Brian, Pace Reporting Live here at the Blue Note here in New York City. I'd like to personally thank Eldar Jangaroff for his time, as well as the staff and management here at the Blue Note. As always, please visit my website, www.thepacereport.com, for my weekly column, as well as my past segments. Until next time, remember, if it's in the groove, it'll make you move. Until next time, peace.